Good evening, everyone. Well, it's evening for me. Good, happy time zone, sun, moon, everything. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, hi, this is Tuesday evening for me. This is To Write and Have Written. I'm Laura Van Arendonk Baugh. We're going to do fun stuff tonight. Yay! Insert Kermit here. Hello, everyone in the chat. Ooh, it's quite lively already. This is great. Uh, okay. So, sorry, I need to move this extremely active window out of, out of, <laughs> I, I, I pulled something up to get started. I actually thought I had started the stream running, like, you know, the, the get ready promo intro like 10 minutes ago. And I looked over, I'm like, why is nothing working? Oh, I never pushed that button. So, hey, oh yeah, everybody is uh, here. Yay, this is awesome. Um, Work appropriate goth is back. Awesome. Yay. I like the whole crowd. Awesome. This is going to be a fun night though. I, I hope, I hope it's going to be a fun night. Um, so I do have a collection of housekeeping things to run through, uh, before we get into the work part of tonight. Yeah, there, there's a work part, probably just me. You can work along if you would like to. Um, so <laughs> first of all, by the way, it's snowing here. Uh, I have a tree full of, you know, a heritage apple tree full of blossoms. A snow is accumulating on them. It's probably quite poetic, but uh, I have no idea what the, what that's going to do to them. So that's that's uh, the four letter S word. The whole chat's like, <sighs> okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, like I I like snow. I just um, you know uh, kind of didn't want it on top of my apple blossoms. Oh, Bridger, like you're allowed to be a functioning adult and have like income and stuff during the stream. Please, uh, <laughs> please, please, please get money. Yes, there we go. All right. So, uh, some things to run through and share with you if I can get, let's see if I get stuff up. Um, uh, nope, don't, don't do that yet. That's too much, too exciting. Don't look, that's a peek. I got home late from my own client today. Um, so uh, my time that I was going to spend setting up, getting everything nice and organized for the stream uh, was a little compressed. So bear with me just a little bit as I'm doing a lot of this on the fly. Um, yeah, uh, work appropriate, God loves snow, but you live in the South. It's probably because you shut down after this guy thinks about it for like two seconds. Yeah, the one of the most embarrassing um, like I, I, I apologize for, for, for the locals uh, moments was I had a friend, uh, from Sweden, um, over here in the, in the U S and we were not in Indiana. We were together at a conference in, um, I want to say Maryland, Virginia, somewhere East coast ish. I don't remember been to a lot of places and, um, and they had like an inch of snow and the schools were shutting down. Government was shutting down everything. And she's like, is this normal? And I'm like, well, it kind of depends on where you are when you ask. <laughs> so yeah, but she was from Sweden. She was like, it's an inch of snow. Like what is, that's not even a thing. So, okay. Yeah. Um, hold, hold, <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, uh, I know. Hold on steam labs. Just chill for a second. That's coming up. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. News first up. Um, Crown and Creed, which you see on your screen, which is number three in the Shard of Elan series. If you have read it and if you liked it, um, I'm going to ask you to please vote for it in the Realm Awards Reader's Choice uh, Alliance Award. And uh, if you have not read it, great, fine, stay here. You're welcome and all of that. But um, th that award, the Alliance Award, is 100% determined by reader votes. So if it's something that you would like to uh, throw me a shout for, I would really appreciate that. So I'll put a link uh, in the chat in just a moment. Next on the list of fun and exciting things, today is a cover reveal day. So since I'm having a stream on cover reveal today, but -da, a cover. This is the fourth and final cover in the Elemental series, uh, <laughs> edited, edited uh, by Rhonda Parrish, who may or may not be, she's occasionally in the chat, we'll see. Um, but I love this. This is a Selkie mid transformation. And how cool is this illustration? I like it a lot. So, um, 
So that is available for pre-order starting today. Um, and yeah, I just, I just, sorry, I just have to like the cover for a minute. I've seen it before. I still like it. <laughs> um, so, uh, thank you for sharing in my cover reveal. And then one more thing. Uh, I am also in this anthology, which is coming out on Friday. Uh, this is a collection of flash fiction and I want to talk just a second about what's going on with this. So we're having a live, live streaming launch party on Friday. So, um, if you're interested and would like to come to that, please do. You're more than welcome. Uh, but here, you guys on the stream tonight get the sneak peek of what I'm going to say at the live stream party on Friday, which is that I'm a nerd. This is not really a surprise. Uh, and I like to hide reference jokes in my fiction. I do this a lot. Um, sometimes they're geeky reference jokes. Um, if you've read The Butcher of Scarlet Hollow, which is a story I give away for free uh, on my website, and there's, uh, you know, Tom the Baker is, uh, is trying some new, new product, and so he's walking around and he's offering people, would you like a jelly? And he gets interrupted. Okay, so just, you know, little nerdy Doctor Who references and stuff. Um, sometimes I hide in things that are just like scientific or, you know, some makes me, makes my nerd and happy. There's a terrible, terrible reference joke in my story in Sensational. Uh, the story in Sensational, it is a side story to the Shard of a Line series. You do not have to read Shard of a Line um, to appreciate the story. Oh, it's a st complete standalone. Um, or to get the reference joke. The reference joke is not about my my fiction it is a nerd joke um the first person to identify my terrible terrible reference joke and submit it to me by email uh, because the email timestamp will determine the first person um will get a five dollar amazon gift card which is not a huge amount of money except it is more than you would spend for this anthology of 49 stories so uh you get the anthology for free plus you get paid for reading the stories if uh, if you find the reference joke. So there we go. Okay, let me catch up with the chat here. Um, oh, oh come, come on, Nightbot. Seriously, why is Nightbot even here? Do I even have Nightbot? Seeker, if you're on the chat, can you address Nightbot? I don't know what's going on, but, uh, but I'm not even sure Nightbot was supposed to be in my chat and certainly shouldn't be slapping Bridger for uh, for uh, posting things when, okay, yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, all right, sorry. Anyway, yes, okay, nerd jokes are the best jokes. Yay, thank you, uh, thank you for that. And I am gonna post uh, some links and hopefully Nightbot won't slap me down. Um, I hear John talking, but I don't know if he's talking to me or to the Labrador. These things happen, okay. Um, <laughs> all right, well, Bridger, I appreciate you trying to link to the award nomination, uh, thank you. Uh, we'll just figure out what's going on. I, I don't even know. Okay. Anyway, let's, uh, where, where, where do I keep things? I wish I'd gotten home on time. All right. Look, here's a big old pile of Nightbot is modern. And <laughs> Seeker can't disable Nightbot. Okay. Look, here's, here's things. I'm posting them to come at me nightbot and um, <laughs> we'll see what goes down. All right. Uh, so yeah, so there's, there's your list of fun things to, to catch up on. Um, wow. Sorry. I got totally distracted. Um, so after you check that out, if you want to look at the nerd joke and all that fun, t fun thing to try in the chat now, exclamation mark chocolate, see what happens. <laughs> Lara versus Nightbot are replacing bets. Yeah, come at me, bro. Yay! Oh, the chocolate bot is working. I code like nothing, but I got this one, man. Very motivated for chocolate bot. There, there should be more than one response here, though, chocolate bot. There's a collection. You worked when I tested you. Nightbot, if you've been feared with chocolate bot, so help me. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, um, 
There we go. We are getting some others now. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. There we go. Why we are here. They're, um, yeah, very exciting. Very exciting. Also, I have a reminder for you. Let's see if this one's working. Just because as you're working for yourself, there you go. The data does not judge you. Keep that in mind. All right. Very proud that uh, that things are holding together. Okay, <laughs> just come at keep keep on top of night, but we're good. Okay, tonight, what we're actually going to talk about tonight, um, I'm going to do a little bit of a walkthrough um, first of Soundwise, then later uh, to a lesser degree on Book Funnel. There's to a lesser degree is for a reason, but I'll talk about it as we get there. Um, and I want to show you how you can host and sell uh, your own audiobooks and then also your own ebooks. Uh, you make choices individually. You don't have to approach those as an all or none thing. Um, and there's a variety of reasons you'd want to maybe do this. And this means what I mean by this is your book is not being sold through Audible or uh, Nook Audio or you know pick pick a platform. Uh, your book is being sold by you, and then you can use some of these tools to deliver uh, that book. Um, so with, I guess the exception of that is Soundwise is a retail platform, um, as well, but it's not to the kind of thing like, like if I were on Audible, uh, you would just go and you'd be like, I just want to browse through lots and lots of things until I find something I want. Whereas Soundwise, I can say, I want Shard and Shield. So I'm going to go and buy it there, or I'm going to go to Lars website get a link to Soundwise. I'm going to go to Lawyer's website and I'm going to buy Shard and Shield and then it will get delivered by BookFunnel or something like that. Um, so reasons that you might want to do this, um, there are a number of them. We're not going to cover all possible reasons, but uh, definitely give questions or comments. Please chat with them. Um, so <laughs> the, the kind of the, the big funny looking gorilla in the room um, is AudibleGate, if, which is still continuing to, uh, on, ongoing, um, not nothing new and exciting the last couple of weeks that I'm aware of, but uh, is definitely far from settled. If you are not aware of uh, what is popularly coined as AudibleGate, but it is the uh, situation that Audible has not been paying authors properly is the very, very short version of it. Uh, so I have books on Audible that are going to readers, but I don't get paid for them. So yeah, yeah, boo, Audible gate, yeah, thanks. Um, so anyway, that's a huge thing that I'm not gonna get into at this time. Um, you know, Googling Audible gate will uh, provide you with more than enough reading material on the subject, but you can see why while this is happening, uh, not super excited about, wow, let's put all my new material on Audible, okay? Let's definitely not do it exclusively. Okay, so yeah, PJ's, PJ's like, why am I not surprised? Um, yeah, it's it's a little bit wonky. Might be something worth looking up to. So the other thing, um, if we leave that aside, uh, if I sell my own books, I get all the money. <laughs> That's great. Um, so right now, um, like if, if, if I have a book that sells for, I don't know, let's say $19.99 because I like really easy math, so 20 bucks. Um, on Audible right now, I might get two or three of that or, or zero. Um, on other platforms, I might get half of that. I might get 70% of that. Um, if I sell it on my website, I get $19 and change. So that's pretty nice. <laughs> um, so that's, uh, that's something to keep in mind. Um, <laughs> Bridger says, and we like Lara more than Bezos. Ah, okay. Um, so just investing the uh, money and the time to get more money back is, um, well, we, we call that capitalism, right? <laughs> that's business. Um, so that's good. Um, and I'm going to show you Soundwise, which is something that I discovered only within the last couple of weeks. And uh, I have been moving my stuff over there. It's not completely done yet, but it will be uh, happening. Um, I'm also going to show you BookFunnel, which is what I found first. And uh, BookFunnel definitely does work. Under normal circumstances, um, they'd be 
roughly competitive in price, but I found Soundwise on AppSumo and I'm gonna share that with you. So, um, which means that's a lifetime deal for uh, less than a year of book funnel, um, like well under a year. So I'm gonna show you the things. Okay. All right, so let's get over let's really hope that that my all my tech works out hi yeah thanks we're done with that now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna bring up we are for real there we are okay <laughs> I'm so professional all right so this is my soundwise dashboard this is where I've been uploading audiobooks so far and I am going to just finish one of them so you can see how uh, how it works here this is not the hyper slick interface that you will see on some other platforms, but it's a perfectly functional interface. Um, I've got just a couple of gripes about it, um, but I'll, I'll show you those as we go. Um, yes, it does have uh, book funnel and sound soundwise both have fully functional apps for the listening, uh, for the listener that they're going to be just as good as any other audiobook apps that you, that you have going on. Um, so yeah, and great point. Uh, PJ says this isn't something I need right away, but it's something I want to learn about going forward. I kind of wish I had done some more advanced planning um, and, and you know, I'm, I'm catching up, I'm gonna be fine, but I was like, oh, I could have set up this earlier. I could have, uh, I could have brought my readers along with me rather than now trying to talk them out of other platforms that they were already using or, you know, those kinds of things. So. So this is why I wanted to show what we have. And let me see, can I get this to fit in here? There we go. So add new soundcast uh, is pretty darn straightforward. <laughs> I'm just going to um, come in here. Soundcast, I'm sorry, Soundwise is not specifically a audiobook platform. It is an audio platform. That sounds like a very small distinction and realistically it works just fine for audiobooks, but there are a few things that you're going to see that if you've been thinking about Audible or, you know, other platforms, um, it's going to look a little bit different. Sorry, I'm checking, checking the chat. Oh, good. Um, Bridger has been picky with her audio experience, but did like her book funnel. So yay, that's great. Okay. Oh yeah. And work appropriate goth fan. Yes. Excellent point. Libraries, guys feel free to use library please like use get my stuff on libraries see libraries actually pay their authors making them a better option than some other platforms and i will no author i know will ever be grumpy about you getting their stuff from a library like seriously and you can get it for free using uh hoopla or um oh my gosh libby and so many other great uh uh canopy like so many great library apps out there so Yes, yes, please, please. Yeah, libraries work on two models um, that either they pay more for a single copy that then has, what, a hundred or something uh, borrows attached to it and then they buy another one, or they pay a lesser amount per cop uh, per borrow. Um, so there's you know a couple of ways that can happen. It doesn't matter, authors get paid. Yay, <laughs> so work appropriate goth works at a library. Oh, we love you. Yes, please, <laughs> please, please share anything you would like to share in the chat. And yeah, 100% libraries, absolutely. Okay, um, and all my audio stuff is distributed to libraries as well. So I'm just, we're showing you retail directly to the consumer at this moment. Okay, so up here, my, uh, my cursor showing. Yes, my cursor is showing. Okay, great. Um, so public and private. Um, this is something that's going to be a little distinct to, to start with, uh, because the, you know, this isn't going to be on most audiobook platforms. Private is, would be if you have a subscription model that you are dripping out, like say you ha um, wanted to run something that almost like a private podcast and you're giving out new material every day or once a week or whatever your, your model might be. And you can actually set that up in Soundwise as a subscription service. And then only those people with that subscription would get it. That's not what we're going to do here today. We're doing a public sound cast, which means anybody can go to this and purchase it. Yay. So 
Yeah, thanks Work Appropriate Goth. Feel free to volunteer any of your wisdom in the chat. Um, so title, uh, also let's pretend I can spell, hooray, best book ever. All right. <laughs> and because this is not a audiobook platform as much as it is an audio platform, when you're looking at categories, let me get this up here where you guys can see it. Um, you know, it's, it's not set up like, uh, like, oh, what about, what are all my kinds of fiction and nonfiction? Okay. They're a little more broad topical. And I usually just go with fiction because that that's it. And I'm not going to drill down any deeper than that because th that's not it. But it's also, this isn't really a browsing platform. This is what I'm using for delivery. Okay. So, uh, that hasn't bothered me as much, uh, cover art. Um, let's see what I can get here. There we go. Um, can you, can you do this? Nope, it's not gonna show for you guys. Okay, well pretend I'm uploading cover art. <laughs> it's there. Uh, and then I can come down here and this is where I can start setting uh, pricing. I can, I can uh, make it for an individual outright purchase. I can make it a subscription model. I can add coupons and discounts. All of the things that you would want on a normal retail platform. Uh, here, there are some cool things that you can do if, de depending if it's the kind of thing you want to do. So comments and likes, you can actually, you know, people can keep a running conversation on your soundcast as you go. Uh, I don't think I want that. Um, I want people to get, be able to come in blind to the book experience and not have potential, you know, conversation about future events or whatever running in, in there. But if you were doing something that was not as, um, you know, not a straightforward audiobook. Uh, you know, that could be, uh, fun. Um, and you know, ratings, listener count, subscriber count, all the things. So, uh, and it does the advantage of using a delivery platform as opposed to hosting all the files yourself, uh, not only like dealing with bandwidth and all the tech issues <laughs> and everything, but, uh, I don't want to deal with everybody's tech, everybody's tech support. Okay. So, um, if, if people, uh, when, and I, and I do this a couple of times a year when I give away free stuff, um, cause I always have free, free stories available on my website, just as lean magnets and whatnot. And then like every, every December, I, um, not every, but frequently in December, I will give something away or whatever. And there's always like, I just have to set aside a few hours to deal with walking people through how downloads work. Okay. You've got, you've got an EPUB or a Mobi. Here's how you can open it. No, you, you can't open the Mobi on your Mac. You have to get it, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, the advantage of having somebody else book funnel or Soundwise, whatever handling that is, I just, I just send them the file saying, Hey, here's where your book is. Talk to them if you have trouble. Bye. <laughs> and, and they have people who are paid to take care of that. Yay. Not my issue. So, um, all right, so I'm going to jump back here and we're going to finish out, um, good spell gone bug, which I started to set up and I saved it for, uh, this, this podcast. So I've got everything, uh, set up here. I've set up some, some discounts, you know, I can do whatever I like. This one's, um, it's a pretty short piece. So I've got the price set at 375. It's not a, not a big deal. Um, and then I'm going to come over here, top left, where it says add track. This is my complaint is probably too strong a word, uh, about Soundwise. If you were purchasing the regular, uh, monthly subscription for this service, you would have bulk download. The super deal that I got that's on the, um, that's on the link that's on the AppSumo link that's showing up in your chat right now. And if you're hearing this on the podcast later, it will be in the show notes. Um, bulk upload is disabled. I have it right now. <laughs> Let me tell you about that in just a second. Um, what this means is, you know, if you are doing something like, um, uh, uh, sorry, let me get back here to start uh, good spell gone bug. That's what I want. Good spell gone bug. I've got, I think three tracks to upload. It's a very short piece. So no big deal. Um, so let me, get that started while we talk. However, if I'm uploading something like 
uh, Shard and Shield with 72 chapters plus intro, outro credits, all of that sort of thing. Uh, that turns into quite the project and that's a lot of project actually. So I, <laughs> poor John was watching me, um, the other, uh, the other night when I was just like, drag one file over, drag one file over, drag one file over. And I'm manually, uh, renaming every one of those as we go, because as you can see here, sorry, I'm talking more slowly while I'm working. So as the upload runs and it's some of the other platforms that I've used are a little bit smarter about grabbing metadata, um, for other things. This one just uses the file name exactly. So, um, that's nice. That's not what I want. I'm going to say, uh, it's intro credits. And so I have to manually rename, uh, that cause it's not going to grab that metadata. So, but you know, there we go. That's, that's not the, uh, not the end of the world. Here's what you need to know. If you're going to get the AppSumo deal, which, uh, is $59 for a lifetime subscription, as opposed to $39 for every month, um, you can see the math. Okay. Um, if you're going to do that, uh, they actually are running a, uh, behind the scenes promo that if you then give them a review, doesn't even have to be a five-star review, just review them, um, on any of several platforms, they will give you temporary, you know, like a, a month per year or whatever, um, upgrade, which it does get you the bulk upload. So if I want to come over to here, add track, I can click bulk upload. I can grab these other two and grab them in here. And here we go. Um, if I had discovered that before uploading 72 chapters, it would have been great. Hey, what happened? Try again. Why, why are you having a trouble? Huh? Oh, I know why you're having a trouble. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I disabled, I disabled my cloud syncing to avoid uh, dropped frames uh, on the stream tonight. Uh, so I wouldn't have be competing for bandwidth and I didn't have that file locally. So we're just gonna leave you. Bye, there you go. So, so we're just gonna call this closing credits and there is no body <laughs> to this story. There you go. You can make individual tracks, public or private. I don't know why you would want to in an audiobook, but there's just a lot of features that you have available. Um, with this also, that was the wrong, I just published that to the wrong, let's put this in the right book. There we go. The other thing you can do, let's come down here. You can give your individual tracks cover art. So if you wanted every chapter to have its own picture, you could do that. You also can attach files. I like this because um, I have a map for Shard and Shield that can go in the introduction track and now they have a, a map, a PDF or a JPEG or whatever you would like to do. For my nonfiction, I have some uh, supplementary material attached to individual chapters that is um, more visual in nature. Um, and so like sometimes when you get audiobooks from the library and they'll have, you know, here's the PDF that you can download with it, you can do that. But instead of a PDF per book, you can have a PDF per chapter. You know, you can do a lot with it. Um, excuse me. PJ asks a uh, potentially ignorant question. What do you use to record your audio? Not an ignorant question. Uh, I have a fairly decent amateur setup. Um, I have a nice microphone. Um, let's see if I can, Hey, what are we doing here? Okay. Hello. <laughs> this is my, my nice microphone here. Um, I have a, um, and I actually haven't used it yet. This is my newer microphone and I had a nice foam bubble that I used with my previous microphone. I, I haven't done some testing yet with this one. Um, and then I have some really nice software because, uh, video editing was a thing that I did. And so I collected all the cool toys for that. <laughs> so you can, there's a, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because there's a ridiculous amount of good information out there. Um, if you start just Googling and I know you podcast, so you've got a fair, fair leg up on, on that anyway. Um, but any, anything that you're using for your better quality sound recording, uh, is, is going to be great for audiobooks. 
Uh, you do need to be very cal uh, aware of room no uh, your room tone, um, background noise. Uh, uh, the, the, there are minimum sound qualities, uh, file qualities that the various platforms will accept. That's actually one of the things I was going to mention about SoundWise is there is no audio quality control. I could upload total junk and it would take it. Um, so it's on you to make sure that your stuff is good uh, going in. Whereas like, for example, if I upload to Audible, um, Audible's got a pretty strict QC check and they have on several occasions sent files back and be like, sorry, we're not taking this. Um, and they're not wrong to do that. Like if, if, they, if their listeners don't like it, you know, they lose, they lose customer base. Um, but sound wise, uh, because they're not trying to run it as a retail catalog, um, just don't have that same uh, priority, I guess. So, uh, so yeah, you need to be cautious about your own audio as you're, as you're uploading this. Um, so again, PJ, you've got your podcasting, you've already got a leg up on things. Um, but in general, uh, just whatever you would want, if you look up the recording, the minimum sound, uh, the minimum file standards for, uh, uploading ACX, which is, uh, audible, just the uploading side of audible. Um, and then just apply that information across the board. Okay. Um, so, sorry, where was I? Okay. So if I've got these, um, tracks, let me come back to the, to the book here and I can see it automatically sets up a landing page for me. Um, so <laughs> pretty basic and low budget. Hey, uh, I'm not running the, the highest end thing over here. I just try really hard to make, make good use of what I have. Um, is Elena in the chat? I don't, I don't think I've seen her go by. Um, and oh yeah, sorry. Thanks. Hey, look, a landing page. How's that? Thank you. Um, and uh, but yeah, Elena, Elena does, uh, both amateur and professional voice work and she's got, um, a, her, her studio is literally a corner of her basement with, um, foam and quilts and, uh, co collection of hodgepodge equipment. So if she comes by, we can, uh, we can grab her. So, Hey, thanks Kate. I saw that. I liked it too. It made me laugh. Okay. Uh, yeah, good. We're fine. Thanks. Okay. So. Here's my, here's our landing page. I've gotten to customize. You can see I have a logo, my name, you know, I can set up my, my storefront, um, to a degree. It's not super fan. Uh, this isn't like I'm styling a website or anything. This is their site. I just, you know, can, can customize a little bit. Um, and I've only got the two tracks cause I don't, don't have the, the, the body, uh, local to upload. But it also gives a little bit of uh, upselling. Would you like some of these other things that Laura has written? <laughs> okay. And then it's got a little bit of uh, tech support stuff built in at the bottom. So you can just start sending people this page. So if I, if I had my social media, I could link just to this landing page. People can make the purchase from there uh, and uh, uh, SoundWise uses Stripe as a, as a payment gateway. So you set up a Stripe account and then what it's like 2.9% plus 30 cents for every transaction. Uh, so that's, you're, you're going to keep, um, 97% of your purchase price, which is pretty nice. Like that's way better than a lot of other platforms. Um, and I can, let's see, come down here and set up like, so I have a discount. Uh, say I want to offer it for 50% off. I can either set up a, uh, this is actually a coupon code. I just named it discount because I'm not very creative when I'm doing my demos, or I could use a promo landing page specifically. And if I open that up, you can see it comes up with it on sale. Um, so then I can send people that link instead to, to have it on it on a discount. And, um, and if I come back here, you know, you can set it to expire that promotion again, all of, all of those great things. Um, okay. Elena is here. Sorry. So she just went to, yeah. Um, 
uh, if we, maybe we'll grab Elena uh, later to talk about home audio setups. Um, yes, PJ, it's all automatic. Um, so it's pulling from your own account uh, what what books, you know, to suggest other books from your account. Um, and no, this audio, <laughs> no, uh, this audio is, a, is an outlier audio price. Um, Good Spell Gone Bug is a short story. So I'm selling it for super cheap because it's not a book. It's a story. So, um, you know, it's like a, it's like more like a, a podcast episode than it is a book. So yes, let me get back. Here we go. So, um, yeah, sorry. Again, the, the, the dashboard is not an audiobook specific audiobook centric dashboard. Um, so a lot of their people will be doing, you know, subscriptions or podcasts or, you know, those kinds of setups. So they don't just have a column full of pricing, but, um, my other items are, are much more typically audiobook priced. Uh, let me see if I can get to a landing page here for Shard and Shield. Yeah. So this is, um, a little bit more. And again, I can price this more competitively than it would be on say audible, uh, because I get more money from the sale. So, um, so, okay. And, oh, a video sound booth tour would be a lot of fun. We should do that at some point. Okay. And, um, this, there's a con job audiobook. That was my very first audio baby's first audiobook way back when, um, okay. And I'm sorry, work appropriate goth. I didn't see what was nifty, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping that you got to en enough time to see whatever it was. So, all right. Are there other questions, um, before I move on or just making sure that, uh, we get this. Um, so what I don't like as much, let me see if I can go here where it says tracks. Um, and I, I said, as I gave a heads up that, you know, you have to watch and rename your tracks, um, as they come in. Um, you can play your tracks here, uh, on the individual track page where you can upload your attachments and you know, your individual art, if you would like that, you cannot play your tracks from the book page itself, which again is something that I can do on other platforms. And I miss here because super paranoid Laura, who may have had a friend once upload an audiobook with a couple of tracks flipped in order. <laughs> Certainly not something I ever did. Definitely not just a friend. Um, and so I like to go through before I publish a book and just quick play, you know, just a few seconds of every track to make sure <laughs> chapter seven comes before chapter eight and not the other way around. Um, and I just can't do that quickly and easily on this platform. But every time I run into something here, that's just, it takes me a few extra clicks to do. I tell myself $60 for life versus $40 a month. And then it's fine. <laughs> okay. So that's, um, that's, that's really where I am. Like, I don't have to sell that many books to pay for my lifetime investment on this platform. So, um, yeah, so social civil savvy has had an audiobook for a couple of years and fired up has had an audiobook for two or three years. I think the fired up audiobook I did not do, um, the fired up audiobook. So this, this is a great, um, I did a, 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 a side, side bunny trail on, um, done is better than perfect. Right. So I had been intending to do a fired up audiobook for a really long time. Um, and it was staying on my to-do list as opposed to, I got that done list. And then Tantor, who's a big name in audiobooks, uh, contacted me and asked if they could purchase audio rights. And I looked at the contract and I, I had this actual conversation in my head, which was, I could make more money if I did this audiobook and retailed it myself. I know I could. But on the other hand, right now I'm making no money at all on the audiobook because I haven't actually done it yet. I keep meaning to, but that doesn't count. So I sold them the audio rights. They paid me a lump sum. Um, I will get royalties after that lump sum, you know, uh, so after I earn out that advance. Um, and is it as much as I could make a sell it doing it myself? No. Is it more than I made by not doing it? Yes. 
So <laughs> I, I say a lot, you'll, you'll hear me say a lot that there are many correct answers, <laughs> okay? And I think that's an example of one of them. Like I did get around to doing the social, uh, social civil and savvy audiobook, um, but fired up, I just wasn't getting it done. So take the money and let somebody else do it. Yes, this is, this is, what, this is what traditional publishing is for, guys. So, okay. Um, so once I get everything in, I can reorder the tracks, that sort of thing. You're going to see on book funnel, that is something you cannot do. So this is something I like here. And this is something I do find away voices is where I distribute my audio that goes to traditional retailers, um, and to libraries as well. And they've got a great audio platform set up, but, uh, but most people know about them. So that's why we're not doing the walkthrough there. And, um, and they are not going to give you, you know, 97% of the royalties either. So that's why we're doing the walkthrough over here. But I like them because that's how I get into libraries. So not knocking them. You can do both. You can do all of the things. Okay. Um, so I mentioned, let me see if I can get here. So this is the AppSumo offer, and you can see uh, it's $59 for life um, <laughs> or $10 a month. Guys, it's six months, take it, okay? Um, the link in, that you're seeing in the chat is my affiliate link. So, I, you know, be nice. I would appreciate if you use that, if you decided to go with that. Certainly don't have to. Uh, the bonus of that is it does give you $10 toward AppSumo if you haven't purchased them before, with, through them before. Uh, AppSumo, if you're not familiar, I know I've talked about them on the stream before. Um, they are... I, I get so much stuff through AppSumo. Um, they do amazing deals on software for companies that are either trying to get a fast cash infusion so they can do a big level up or trying to get a bunch of word of mouth and buzz going or something like that. So they will have a limited offer for something like this um, so that I will <laughs> I will tell, oh my gosh, you guys, this I found this deal. And, and it helps them that way. But it also really helps me because $60 for life? Yes, I'll take that. Um, anyway, so you can see these other other um, deals they have. And if I were, you know, selling uh, a whole lot of regular subscription audio content, you know, I had uh, a self-help podcast and a true po crime podcast and, a, you know, all the, all the top, uh, top things going on here, um, or not even as a podcast, but like a subscription content, because again, you can mark this all private and turn it into subscription models and all of that then um, there's some really nice features they have for those high tiers. But until I'm rolling around in my money like Scrooge McDuck, I'm going to get this $59 lifetime access deal and then just click the few extra times to do those extra things that are not as slick uh, in that lower tier. So, okay. And I showed you, oh yeah, so you can also, let me get back here. I don't remember if I showed you this. Um, you can bundle things. So if I wanted to sell a collection of uh, maybe a whole series together or, or something like that, um, Shard of Villain number two is in progress. So you know I could I could put together a collection of buy the entire series as one audio collection, and then I could sell that for a bundle rate and you know make people get a good deal, you know that kind of thing. So yeah, I just like this guy. It's got a fair number of features here. So, okay, um, you will you will see. Let me see it here. Um, there's a record tab. This is a higher tier option that is not available at the AppSumo deal level. I'm okay with that because you probably shouldn't be making your audiobook here anyway, for all the reasons we were just talking about uh, with you know sound quality and whatnot. This, me just speaking into a web browser is not gonna be the kind of sound quality I want for my listeners to pay for. So just be aware of that. Um, you, there are other items that, uh, other features that are available only at the higher, higher tier things you can set, um, you can schedule. So if somebody makes a purchase and then you can drip content to them on an automatically uh, releasing content to them um, on scheduled publication, 
so and I can't schedule I can't preload and then schedule a release date at the AppSumo tier um, oh no I have to stay up on the day of and click the button like you know again that for for <laughs> for sixty dollars for life I'll I'll stay up and click the button um, you know not sub subscriber notifications that has to be manual as opposed to fully automated again that's something I'll live with for the price. Um, if you're paying for the higher tier, you can not only have people purchase audiobooks, you could have them rent audiobooks so they could get it for a lower price, but not get to keep it. Um, you know, so that's, that is a cool feature. I'll get it when I'm Scrooge McDuck. Okay. You know, those kinds of things. So anyway, um, if it's something where, you know, you are doing a lot of audio, um, you are making a fair amount of money off of it and you're thinking those upgrades sound pretty nice. Um, <laughs> you regularly upload books with 70 some chapters and you want to keep bulk upload forever. Um, the, the behind the scenes promo that I mentioned um, will also give you a coupon for 30% off the, those higher tiers. So again, if you want to do that, it's, it's, it's a good deal. I'm just saying I can do a lot with the AppSumo deal. So, okay. Um, and then for ebooks, um, or you know what, let me just hop over and show you uh, audiobooks on BookFunnel as well. And this is going to be a little bit less of a walkthrough um, because the BookFunnel dashboard shows more information than I am comfortable putting on a live stream. Uh, for example, uh, in order to show you some of the setup, it it has a list of all of my recent customers' email addresses that would be visible, and they didn't sign up for me to stream that information. Um, so we're, we're, I'm going to be a little more selective about what you see in the in the uh, book. Uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, in book funnel dashboard. I'm sorry. <laughs> I saw PJ's question. I got totally distracted. Fifty private listeners. That is not for purchases. Okay. So if you um, the question was it uh, the, that low tier, that, that, that lifetime deal tier only allows 50 private listeners. Those are for private. If you remember when we were setting up the, the audiobook, we could choose public or private. And for audiobook that I'm selling, I'm setting up public. That would be if I have a pool. So um, for example, for your PJ, for your um, podcast and, um, and you're, you're talking to people in general about um, your, 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 uh, zoo fit program and then you have a inner circle of people who paid for a vip membership who get a special bonus collection of material um, and so they're getting that audio content on top of your regular podcast but it's private just for them you could have only 50 people in your inner circle so if if i hope i'm explaining that in a in a clear manner um, so that is not your sales limit by any means. That is the number of private subscribers that you could have. And so, yeah, so if I were, <laughs> you know, if I were Michael Hyatt or somebody, that would be an insanely low number um, for my, for my VIP or tier of private subscriber, subscribers. I don't have any, so it's perfectly reasonable for me. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so let me get back to book funnel. Yeah. So here I am on book funnel. Now book funnel is a monthly sub or subscription, or it could be an annual. I actually do an annual because you save a little money that way. And book funnel, I want, I want to point out, first of all, has a lot of features that are not just book delivery. So that is probably not even the primary reason to have book funnel. It's what I'm showing you tonight. Book funnel is good for, um, well, actually, this is kind of book delivery, yeah, but uh, sharing promotions with other authors. So a bunch of epic fantasy writers get together and we do a group promotion and then we share audiences or something like that. Uh, lead magnets, uh, distributing ARCs uh, to, to early readers, uh, all that kind of stuff is stuff that you can do with BookFunnel. Story Origin also does a lot of that. Story Origin um, is officially launching still uh, right now and uh, has some good pricing going on. So both of those are things to look into. Excuse me. <laughs> All right, sorry, <laughs> thanks. Um, but 
One thing that you can do with BookFunnel is use it to deliver ebooks and audiobooks that you sell on your own website. So when I do this, I use WooCommerce on my own site. Um, I run a WordPress site. WooCommerce is a free shopping cart software that is amazing. Um, it's incredibly advanced. Um, and the way, the way they, the way their business model works is their core shopping cart software is free. And then they have some really cool add-ons that cost money. Probably you don't need most of those add-ons or any of those add-ons. I don't think I pay for any of my WooCommerce uh, material. I have, uh, the, the core WooCommerce shopping cart and a couple of free extensions. And um, the only thing I might add to that is they have a subscription plugin, which if I decide to go into a uh, Patreon or uh, other subscriber, you know, crowdfunding thing, I, that would be one way that you could do it, uh, keeping everything on your own website. We'll talk about that next month when we do our uh, crowdfunding and monthly subscriber talk, because I do have people coming in to talk about that, and that will be very cool. I think that's May 18th. I don't know. Check the calendar. Uh, so what I'm saying is, I'm <laughs> getting around to actually saying, this is what the back end of my website looks like, and I have, um, is, is it showing up there? Yeah, you guys can see it. So I have a product that is the Good Spell Gone Bug audiobook, and then I just treat it as, if you can see here, a virtual downloadable product, which I can set up all inside of uh, that Wo free WooCommerce software. And then I connect that to BookFunnel. Let me see if I can get over here and do this. Um, all right. So here I have the Good Spell Gone Bug audiobook. I think I can open this here without displaying anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, again, I'm trying not to share people's information, um, online and book funnel also has a couple of interesting choices where, uh, some sensitive information is not, uh, is not obscured on the screen on your own dashboard. And by sense, I don't mean other people's credit card numbers. That's never going to be the issue. I mean, like my own API key, which I do definitely do not want to stream out onto the interwebs. Um, and that is visible on a dashboard where often that is obscured on a dashboard. So these are things that I'm just trying to be a little bit cautious about. So I'm sorry, that's why we're going slowly through BookFunnel. But here I can, I can see I've set up my book page. Um, I, can, I can have a landing page and everything just as much, just the same way here. Um, and then if I want to see, oh, cause it's already set up here. I would have to open a new, and this is one where I can't show you the process. I'm sorry. Cause it does show you things that we're not going to see, but I would create a new delivery action is what it's called. And there is a nice walkthrough of this on the book funnel site, which I will link to. Um, actually, let me see if I can link to that right now. Where did it go? Huh? It's gone. Oh, here it is. Look at this. So let me just uh, drop this in the chat to be easy, easy access. All right. Um, so th this is a nice, nice step-by-step -step walkthrough. If you have WooCommerce set up, which you can do very quickly, if you have a, Woo a WordPress site, which I do recommend anyway, um, you, you can, you can get this done in a couple of minutes. So it says five minutes here. That's including reading the directions. Okay. And that is, that is one time setup, as it says here, you set it up, but you only have to do this one time. Then you're, then you're good for as many books as you would like to do. Then you're going to go into book funnel and you're going to create what they call a new delivery action. So this new action name, I'm just going to call this good spell demo because I can, <laughs> and, um, I can select you know, I want this. You can actually bundle here too, if you wanted to. So you've got these, these options here. Um, you can set up a pre-order. Uh, and again, it, you can do that on SoundWise, but not at the AppSumo lifetime tier. Uh, so that's just a, you know, what you're willing to pay for. 
book funnel, uh, I want to say starts at $100 a year. And then right now, audio's in beta. They said the audio beta would end in the first quarter of 2021. So it, technically, I'm on grace time right now. When that beta ends for the audiobooks, excuse me, it's going to be, oh, what is it? Let me hang on, I've got the numbers here somewhere. Yeah, it'll be between $120 to $600 a year additional uh, on top of that $100 base subscription cost uh, to do the book funnel audio delivery. Um, now, that sounds like a lot of money, but then when you go back and you look at the SoundWise monthly, uh, monthly uh, cost, um, you'll see that it's not that dissimilar. Um, this is why I really liked the lifetime deal. Okay? <laughs> this is why I wanted in. This is why I wanted to do this, uh, even though I'm I'm not that. Uh, fam I'm, I'm still getting set up with this. Like, I haven't sold any of my products on Soundwise yet because I'm still transferring them all in and getting everything set up. But I've only been using it for about a week. I know that I like it, and I wanted to share it before that that deal expired. So that's what we're doing with that. Um, but anyway. So I could set this up as a pre-order, and then you have here the uh, your WooCommerce uh, SKU and an item link. This is actually pretty straightforward, even though it looks if you're not you know, if you haven't been doing a lot of shopping cart software, don't let it bully you. You can handle it. Um, your SKU is what you set up here in your inventory, and that's literally whatever you decide to name it. So I'm calling it Good Spell Audio One. Actually, you know what? I'm going to call this Good Spell Audio Two because I'm setting up something new. And I think it needs to be uh, distinct and different and unique. So I'm going to come here and I'm just going to copy paste that in. Your item link is going to be wherever this appears on your store. So if I have a product page on the front end of my website, um, this is my link right here, my permalink. So I'm just going to copy this. Uh, oh, sorry, that menu is not showing for you guys. I'm using, I'm right clicking and copying it. So just as thought I was being so helpful by, <laughs> by doing it that way. So you could see what I was doing. And then your item link, you're just going to paste in here. As long as this is paused, it will not be delivering books. So make sure that you unpause it. Um, I haven't talked to anyone, but I'm going to guess that's the number one complaint that I haven't, I haven't done this myself. I'm just saying it's default paused and it's got to be the number one you know, problem they run into. Um, and again, they handle all the tech support. That's a great reason to do this uh, through a platform rather than, I mean, I could just have a bunch of MP3 files on my website, uh, then it would be my problem and I'm not into it being my problem. Okay, and uh, so then I can save it and boom, that's it. Now what happens over here when someone checks out, uh, when they, they purchase my book, because I have this set up with as a virtual and a downloadable, um, because we've connected WooCommerce to BookFunnel, it should automatically fire. They make the payment on website, on my website, and BookFunnel launches it out. Just in case I have a text file that is their downloadable on my website, and it's just a text file that says, hey, thanks for purchasing. Here's the link where, where you can get your book if you don't receive this email automatically. Here's where you can get help if everything, you know, and it's just all spelled out there so that nobody comes and says, hey, Laura, I can't get my book. They've gotten it both in an email and in a dip and a downloadable file when they make the purchase that tells them exactly where everything's coming from. So <laughs> I'm into it. I'm not into it being my problem is my life motto. Hey, yeah, like, like SCP fields, someone else's problem. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so is this making sense? Am I, am I explaining this well? Does anybody have questions about what's going on here? You can do this with eBooks as well. So let me come back here to, um, sorry, I don't want to, I don't think I want to click over. <laughs> to, I'm trying to decide where I can click with book funnel without showing things. Um, so here I have con job as an ebook and con job as an audiobook. And then I can set up that exact same kind of delivery through, um, through WooCommerce. I can, of course, if I come back here, instead of this being a, a text file that says, here's where your book is, 
I could just have that be a downloadable ebook, right? I could have that be an EPUB or a Mobi or a PDF or whatever you wanted here. Um, I don't really like piracy. You know, that's a whole nother topic we can get into another time. But uh, I just don't like it. it makes me angry because uh, <laughs> I know I I found Shard and Shield on a pirate site the week before it released, which is when I realized like, it was time to clean out my advanced reader list. Um, so these are things that, uh, that I just wanna be really cautious about. I have a plugin on WooCommerce that will watermark a PDF with the purchaser's email address. I don't have any way to do that with the ebook or the Mobi because it's not processing those files that are already packaged. Book funnel, if I give them an EPUB or a Mobi to deliver, will modern market with the purchaser's email address. So then when it shows up on, you know, whatever pirate site that I'm not going to advertise right now, um, I can see clearly who purchased it. And, um, and maybe they would have just a little bit of hesitation about putting it up there with their email visible on it. So, so that's, uh, <laughs> I really don't, don't really like piracy is also a good life motto, right? Yeah. Pirates and ninjas, they're great when they're pirates and ninjas, not with my, not with my work. So, okay. Um, Shy Reds Box says, done a bit with e-commerce and this all makes sense so far. Great, awesome. So anyway, so that's the advantage. That's why I would use um, an external delivery service for things like eBooks, which you could uh, totally host on your own website. And eBooks aren't even enormous file sizes where bandwidth is gonna be as much of an itch issue. Um, but, you know, I just like having that extra layer of it's someone else's technical problem. You know, somebody else can play tech support all the time, which is great. And then also having that watermarking option is nice. So, okay. Um, let's see. Um, oh, I, sorry. I did want to point out, I skipped a thing. It's not that critical. But when I am uploading tracks, let's see if I can get here. Let's go this way. If I wanted to add a track, and I'm just gonna upload uh, any old track again here. So I'm uploading this one again. I don't know, it might tell me if this is already up here. No, it will let me do it again, okay. If I come back here, it, these will upload bottom to top. So if I come over and I start, let's do chapter one, let's do chapter two, let's do chapter three. Oh, I'm gonna have to reshuffle all of these to make sense, okay? So just be aware if you are uploading one at a time, start at the end of your book and slide them over one at a time to stack it up. Um, you can save yourself some time that way. And you'd figure that out on your own, but now you don't have to. So what else did I want to mention? That's most of it, actually. Oh, and we're, at, we're after eight already. So I've been going longer than I thought I did. Are there any other questions remaining for this? Um, both of these, as I said, SoundWise takes um, Stripe as payment, Book Funnel. Uh, they're making all of their purchases on WooCommerce. So WooCommerce, you can set up any number of things. Um, you can take it Stripe. You can take, uh, I'm set up with Square. I'm actually set up with both Square and Stripe at this point. Um, and you can set up with, you know, <laughs> I don't know why you'd want to do direct account transfers for eBooks, but you could. Uh, you know, you can just um, get, uh, you know, yeah, you, you've got a lot of options. Um, so if you're going through, if you're selling directly on your site through WooCommerce, you can take a huge number of payment options. Sound-wise, it's going to need to be Stripe at this point. That's the only payment gateway that they use. But try, Stripe is pretty straightforward. Yeah, PJ says, uh, PJ Zufet says, looks like shuffling order isn't a huge ordeal. It's really not. Like, again, you know, for the epic fantasy with, you know, 70, 75 chapters, you know, that's going to be a pain. Um, for a cozy mystery, it's probably not going to be more than a minute of shuffling, so it's fine. So, okay. All right. Well, let me get back to here. Um, 
So yeah, and if we are gonna have, at some point I'm going to have some people on to talk about audiobooks. That date is not nailed down yet, but I have been doing some advanced chatter with people to come on and just talk about production of audiobooks, um, both recording them yourself and hiring them done, uh, things that I have both done. And then we do also have some people coming on to talk about uh, Patreon and other uh, subscription fundraising patron kind of services. I need a word for that. There's a word for that. <laughs> so, all right. Well, hey guys, thanks for, uh, hopefully that was uh, a little bit useful as a walkthrough. I do not know when that AppSumo deal ends. Sometimes they stick around for uh, a month or two, and sometimes they're around for a few days. So I would say if it's something you're considering, you know, don't don't sleep on it for a month. You know, you know, you don't, you don't need to set anything on fire and, and burn over there right now. Um, but but don't wait around too long because I it, it, I don't know how long I don't have they don't post expiration dates on those for the most part. So yeah, crowdfunding, Kickstarter, all of well, less less. Kickstarter is not really an ongoing subscription model, and we're going to be talking about subscription models. So there we go. So okay. <laughs> Fun like moose burpees. Hey, I got that email. I haven't had a chance to see it yet, um, but if it's if it's good, we'll talk about moose burpees later too. Okay, um, <laughs> the podcast is gonna be a what the heck just happened because that was audio out of context. Uh, all right. Hey, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, I if you have questions more on this kind of thing, um, you know where to find me, or we can we can I can happy to clarify via email or something like that, or we could talk about more on this kind of topic later as we go forward. So this was the learn with me uh, because I am still learning <laughs> sound wise because it's relatively new to me. Thank you guys very much for hanging out. Yes, you're more than welcome, Shy Red Fox. And um, yeah, I will see you next week. Is next week the create-in? I think next week is the create-in. I think that's right. So I will see you next week for the create-in. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Good night.